Hello guys, in this video we're going to talk about medians and altitudes. So first let's discuss what a median is. A median of a triangle is a segment that goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's draw some. So for example, if I move that out of the way, I draw a triangle and I find the midpoint of the side then the median would go from that midpoint to the opposite vertex, so there. If I did this side, that would be its midpoint, and the vertex opposite of that would be right there. So those are both medians of a triangle. And the three medians of a triangle intersect at a point of concurrency called the centroid. So here we've got an acute triangle with all the medians intersecting at its centroid P. At a right triangle, all the medians intersect at point P, and then an obtuse. Notice that the centroid is always um, inside that triangle. So the centroid is actually, we practical use for that is the center of gravity. for that triangle. So if we were to cut out a cardboard triangle and try to balance it on the tip of our pencil, we would need to balance it right on that spot where the centroid is. Okay? So other things we know about the centroid. Uh, the medians of a triangle intersect at a point that is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So this centroid P is two-thirds that whole distance from B to F. So if I start at B and go to F, that distance, this is two-thirds of that whole length. And if that's two-thirds, how much is left just from P to F? Yeah, that would be one-third. Okay, so the whole length would be a full three-thirds. Okay, so I need you to think in, in terms of thirds for me and fractions. Okay, so if I take a segment and I split it into thirds, okay, two of those thirds will get you from the vertex to the to the centroid and only one of those thirds will get you from the centroid to the midpoint. That's the idea behind that concurrency of the centroid. So let's look at this example, okay? Or this is just another way of saying it. So P is the centroid, then AP is two-thirds of that whole length AE. BP is equal to two-thirds of that whole unit BF, that whole segment BF. And CP is two-thirds of that whole median CD. So that's another way of saying that same theorem. Okay, so in this example, we have a triangle, ABC, and P is the centroid. And they're telling us that BP is 12. So this distance is 12. They want us to find PF and BF. So this little piece and then the whole thing. There are lots of ways to do this, but again, like I, I told you, it's easiest for me if I think of the whole segment split into two thirds, right? So they're telling us that two of those thirds is 12. So what does that mean each of those thirds are? Well, if two of them is 12, then just one of them would be six, half of that. So each of these thirds has to be six. So that tells me that PF is only one of those thirds, that would be six, and then the whole thing, BF, would be all three of those thirds. So that would be six plus six plus six, which is 18. Now, you can also do this by setting up an equation. So you could say um, BP, just like we said on the previous page, BP is two-thirds of BF, a whole unit, and then plug in what you know. So BP is 12. 
We don't know what Bf is. That's something we're trying to find. So to solve this equation, we would divide by two-thirds or multiply by the reciprocal. So the fractions would cancel out, and Bf would be equal to 3 halves of 12. So that would be 36 divided by 2, which is 18. So that's more of an algebraic way of going about that. And if you wanted to do PF, well, we know PF is equal to one-third of the whole median. So again, since we don't know PF, we would just plug in what we know. So notice we would have to know BF first. So PF is equal to one-third of 18, which is equal to 6. So there's two different ways to handle that centroid concurrency theorem. All right, so now let's look at this. Now we're moving to coordinate plane. And we have our coordinates A, B, and C graphed on there. So what are the coordinates of the centroid? Well, maybe let's, I'm going to draw out the triangle first. And so if we want to do it the old-fashioned way, let's find the midpoint of each side. So here, that would be right there, right there. And let's see, this one I might have drawn a little inaccurately. So this is down two over one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So I would go down one over four. So it's really right there. Okay, so if I put those midpoints on there and then I connect them to the vertices. So this one would be right here. This one would be right here. So you could see really clearly where that centroid is. And then this one is diagonal. So that one might be off depending on how accurately you drew your diagram. And we could visually see that it's happening right here at 5, 5. So we could say the centroid is at 5 comma 5. So it's a very visual way to do, it, to do it. We could also, if you think about it, what's another way to get to 5, 5 using all of those coordinates? Well, this centroid is kind of like the average of all of those coordinates. So if I were to take all of the x coordinates from A, B, and C, so that would be 1, 5, and 9. If I add those up and I'm averaging them, all right, so instead of finding the midpoint, I'm finding the average of three points and divide them by three. And then I take the, do the same thing with the y coordinates. So I'm going to do 5 plus 7 plus 3. And since there's three points, I'm dividing by three because I'm doing the average. So this is going to be 15 divided by 3, which we know is 5. And then this is going to be also 15 divided by 3, and that is also 5. So another way of finding that centroid is to average your x-coordinates and your y-coordinates together. <clears throat> so sometimes if you're less visual or if it's not as easy to see like on that one, that might be a better way to go. Now, let's talk about altitudes. Altitude you probably heard in just a normal conversation. Um, it means the height, right? If you're cruising at an altitude of 30,000 feet in an airplane, that means that's how high you are off the ground. So an altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the opposite side. Notice that when in this altitude, this point on the opposite side does not have to be the midpoint or any special point at all. The only criteria is that it goes through the vertex and that it's perpendicular. So if I was doing that for vertex P, going to the opposite side, it would look like this, okay? And then for vertex R, going to the opposite side, it would look like that, okay? So also notice it says, or to the line that contains the opposite side. So if I have like an obtuse triangle, Q, if I go to Q, I can't be perpendicular and go to the opposite side and stay within the triangle. So that's why PR got extended here 
and this is actually what we would consider the altitude. That's the height of that triangle. Okay, so that would be the altitude from vertex Q to the opposite side. Okay, so just be aware of that. The altitudes of a triangle intersect at a point called the orthocenter. So when I was drawing all of the altitudes in this first triangle, they all met at a point called the orthocenter. <clears throat> so let's look at another coordinate example. So we have this triangle, and these points are already graphed for us. I'm going to go ahead and connect those. All right. And so we have that triangle. We need to write the equation of the line that is an altitude to TK. Well, let's label which one is which. So 10, negative 6, this is K. 9, 2, that's C. And then T is this 2, 4. Okay, so I want the altitude that is to TK. So that means it's going from vertex C and perpendicular to TK. So if I'm trying to write an equation, what do I need for an equation? I need the slope of the line, and I need a point. Well, I have a point. Okay, this green line is going to go through point C. So this point C is my point. I just need to know the slope of that green line. Well, if I know that this is going to be perpendicular to TK, I need to find the slope of TK first. So I'm going to use the perpendicular slope to TK. All right, so let's find the slope of TK. So I'm going to count. This is going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, over 8. So if I reduce that, that'll give me, so the slope of TK is equal to negative 5 fourths. So the perpendicular slope, remember, is the opposite reciprocal. So I'm going to flip that fraction around and make that positive. So that would be positive 4 fifths. So in order to make my equation, I'm just going to use my point slope formula. So I'm going to have 4 fifths and then x minus 9 plus 2. And depending on what format they wanted, you could distribute and put that in slope intercept form. But that would be an acceptable equation of the line. Okay? So we'll do a lot more practice with these in class, so make sure to bring these notes into class.